Most police departments in America that we are watching very closely the events in Ferguson, I understand at 9 o'clock New York time that the uh, uh, findings of the grand jury will be released. We have been, uh, uh, through our intelligence units and others, have been monitoring very closely social media in terms of some of the organizations that are engaging in social media. Uh, we are aware of several demonstrations that are planned both this evening and tomorrow uh, that we will be geared up, if you will, to deal with all of those. We at the same time have been uh, reaching out to a lot of the political leadership around the city. I spent a lot of time today on the phone, phones with uh, a number of our uh, political leadership, just uh, asking that if they become aware of issues in their respective areas to uh, kind of keep their thumb on the pulse, if you will, the things that we can uh, help to respond to, whether it's answering of questions or responding to uh, help police demonstrations that might uh, pop up spontaneously. Uh, we are not anticipating anything uh, that we could not address, that uh, we are anticipating there will be demonstrations, but I'm not anticipating anything uh, getting out of control, if you will. So the shooting in the pink houses, your reaction to that and then uh, Charles Barron calling you to step down as a result? I don't pay any attention to anything Mr. Barron says. He is an incendiary device that is, uh, uh, what is he trying to do to this city? His rhetoric is outrageous. He should be ashamed of himself. Uh, and so, again, other than uh, an annoyance, and that's what he is, an annoyance, that uh, this city is uh, should be quite proud of itself and its ability to deal with these types of incidents, that uh, we deal with them lawfully. There is an investigation being conducted by Mr. Thompson's office, Ken Thompson, that we will work with, and uh, we'll go where the truth takes us, where the facts take us. It is uh, still, I believe, an, an unfortunate, tragic accident that resulted in the unnecessary loss of a life, an innocent life, as I've described. So uh, we will, based on the uh, DA's investigation, as well as our own internal affairs investigation, I think we'll come to an understanding of exactly what happened. It doesn't change the outcome, uh, but might allow us to uh, review some of our practices, procedures, training that we give. But uh, this circumstance uh, doesn't need the inflammatory rhetoric of Mr. Barron or anybody else that uh, uh, that's not what this city is about, that's not what this police department is about, and that's what I would hope that political leadership other than him is not about. Were you taken aback by that demonstration? Oh, not at all. That uh, that cast of characters shows up at every one of these events, and all of you go running with your cameras and looking at a few of you here. Uh, I've watched with great joy in terms of as you report uh, calls for Bratton's resignation, and then I look at what you're reporting on, and there he is, that the same five, six tonight. He had about a dozen people with him, so he's growing in strength in a city of eight and a half million. He has 12 supporters and followers, so uh, you got to take a close look at him in terms of what his background is. That. Uh, no, he's a character and a half. And you know, New York, it's uh, a lot of characters in this town, and he's one of them. What's your reaction uh, to uh, the defense secretary resigning today? Uh, you're ahead of me. I was not even aware of that. That uh, I've been uh, pretty much up in my office in meetings all day and spending a lot of time talking to political leadership around the city. So I'm not even aware of that action. Commissioner, you learned of it. What's your reaction? That uh, in terms of it's uh, uh, probably a loss for the country with him stepping down at this time. That. Uh, I've watched him over these last number of months, and uh, in terms of the circumstances of the resignation, was that given? It might help inform my answer. Commissioner, Commissioner for officer, seriously, did he give his reason for the resignation? Just tie it? He, he did not. Uh, the, the White House is saying it was a mutual decision. Yeah, he might just be tired. He's got a tough job. Commissioner, have you increased patrols in any specific areas where you feel there may be more, uh, you know, violent protests to Ferguson? We're not anticipating violent protests at all, uh, being quite frank with you, that uh, it's, uh, this, it's a city that over time has matured and engages in demonstrations. But no, we have uh, uh, more than sufficient resources around the city to deal with any type of demonstration that might occur. Uh, our goal would be to allow people to demonstrate peacefully, to uh, uh, not interfere with their, their, their rights to do that. Uh, if they were to engage in uh, uh, acts of vandalism, violence, we would deal with that also. But uh, we're not, not anticipating that at this time. Commissioner, last week you talked about um, officers using their own discretion as to when to upholster their their weapon. Can you clarify what they are trained to do specifically when it comes to vertical patrolling? I know that's 
been brought up a lot by the barons and others that they've been trained not to bring their guns out when they're doing that type of patrol. Uh, anything that Mr. Barron would relate to you, uh, basically, uh, uh, basically not hold your breath waiting for the accuracy Can, can you just it. clarify the NYPD policy? NYPD policy is designed to give officers in the field the discretion based on the circumstances they're facing to make decisions based on their training as to what level of force is appropriate in the search circumstances they're addressing. It also, in terms of the uh, drawing of their firearm, also to circumstances appropriate to what they're addressing. Uh, they, as always, will be held accountable for that in terms of explaining their decisions. And if the decision is an inappropriate one, well, that's something that we'll address based on our review. But the nature of policing, the circumstances, all of you cover it. It is a, uh, much the same as the news you cover. You can't anti anticipate every situation, and that's why you train them to use discretion. Commissioner, uh, David. commanders and, and other officers who work in housing say it's not at all out of the ordinary for officers to draw their weapons starting on the roof, uh, you know, because of the sort of general feeling that you know, they don't know what they're going to encounter when they start going down those staircases. There's a lot of crime there. Does that concern you that officers are walking around with their guns out? Leaving the opening up this potential. Is there anything you can do from a training well, it's a, it's side a, to, to, it, to sort of improve that? It's always a concern when officers have their weapons out because of the potential risk. At the same time, I have to be mindful of the risks that they face. Every time they go onto the roof of one of those housing developments, talk to the residents, uh, talk to the cops about what they find on those roofs. It's where they train the pit bulls, it's where people leave out their dogs run wild, it's where a lot of the illegal activity that people are calling us to address occur. So every time they open that rooftop door uh, to go out on the roof and move across the roof to then go down the next stairway, uh, there is a risk that they are facing. They have an incredibly difficult job. And at the same time, what we're trying to do is reduce the risk for the public who lives in those developments who face the same risk trying to, well, one, they're, they're asked not to go up on the roof in the developments, but just going into the hallways. When those hallways, the lights aren't working, the, uh, you know, the, the risk of uh, young children going down the hallways or if there's a fire. No, uh, the, the, the environment that our police officers uh, are exposed to, not just in the housing developments, but throughout the city, there's still a level of risk that uh, you know, we have to give them training, we have to give them oversight, but we also have to rely on their judgment as to what they do to deal with that. Commissioner, Commissioner, Commissioner do, you, do you think it's correct that, that, that people are connecting what happened to Eric Garner, what happened to Michael Brown, what happened to Akai Gurley? Do, do you think it's appropriate when people speak out and sort of connect the, these different incidents? Uh, I, in terms of they're entitled to uh, speak their mind on it, that mm -hmm. each situation is a very different circumstance. The case of Mr. Garner was a, uh, uh, you know, an alleged chokehold. Uh, the circumstances of the officer interaction. The incident in the pink houses, they're a totally different uh, set of circumstances. So that uh, the district attorney, or, or myself as police commissioner, you have to look at each incident uh, based on the totality of the incident, and that's what we will do. Okay, thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.